introducing first of all to the table a man who's been an exciting and popular member of this town shootout series all season and a man with a trouser collection to rival anyone. He is Mad Mac. He's Martin McIntosh. And his opponent making his debut in this town shootout series. A familiar face around these parts and a back to back club champion here. A warm welcome to Neil Winkworth. <laughs> So local favourite, Neil Winkworth. You might not know a lot about him. I do. Fairly local and O'Neill very well. He's a very, very accomplished snooker player. Lots and lots of centuries. Um, recently turned his hand to Paul. Won the club championships recently, which I think has got him the nod. And it'll uh, be interesting to see how he goes. He's in here first. I'd like to say we're in, joined in the commentary box for a couple of words by our winner, John McAllister. Yeah, John, just uh, come and join us for a second. That was that was well, some start from you and some finish overall to that match. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it made it a little bit worse. Where I think I should have really went three 0 up, apart from that great um, coming out of the snooker, um, and then it's gone to all and sort of the pressure's right back on me then um, from a really good start. So yeah, just happy to get over the line in the end. Did you, you're obviously used to the uh, thirty-second shot clock with the Premier League. Paul, um, once that 15 seconds kicked in, I mean, can you really, have you tried to prepare for that or did it just, <laughs> I mean, it's tough, surely, it's got to be. Yeah, it was definitely tough. I think, obviously, when I went 4 2 off, I tried to start time wasting a little bit just to try and crawl over the line, but obviously, 15 seconds, it's still really short, so you can't really do much of it. But um, yeah, the heart starts racing a little bit more because you haven't got any time to think it's basically the first shot that comes to mind you've got to take and uh, yeah, I hope it's the right one. Yeah, Jordan Church up next. It's, uh, it's going to be tough, obviously. I mean, naturally, probably he's more suited to a shot clock than you, people would say. But I'd argue you might be slight favourite in a race to 15 in a big event. But um, what, do you, what do you think of the shot clock? Is that going to... Do you think that sort of evens it up a little bit? Um, yeah, possibly. I think um, he is obviously great to watch when he is playing. And I think the shot clock probably helps him because it actually makes him flow a little bit more. So he, he hasn't got the time to think and... Uh, yeah, it puts me under a little bit more pressure because, yes, I am a bit more methodical. But, yeah, we've just got to see how it goes. And um, it depends on how the balls break, doesn't it? Just lastly, you uh, we were talking about how prolific you and Jordan were as juniors. Multiple world champions, national cha you're national champion at 13 years old, even though you had a fully grown beard um, from the age of about 12. <laughs> but um, who was a better junior, you or Jordan? Uh, Jordan Church. Yeah, um, I'm not too sure because obviously he was um, from the World Rules, wasn't he? A little bit more. So uh, it, yeah, it's hard to compare because obviously I think he was about probably what five years younger, maybe uh, five years older. Sorry, 
So different, sort of different time scales, but um, yeah, it's really hard to compare. Do you think, just before you go, do you think that that stands you in good stead when it comes to because obviously I played England juniors as well, and the, when you get to the finals of say like a world final or a European final, Nations Cup final, you actually have got because you've got the the, the under 16s, the under 18s, under 21s, and and the, the men's, the ladies, and all that kind of thing. That you've actually got a, a, a good sort of couple of hundred people watching your matches sometimes and do you think I mean the atmosphere's a, a bit mad as well do you think that kind of thing would would help you with this do, do you just sort of think back to that or do you just treat this completely differently you try and complete um, you try and think about it just the one match at a time really but I think it does help put you in good stead because like you say there is massive crowds and I think in a team event as well there's probably a little bit more pressure on you because you're not only letting yourself down you're letting your teammates down as well so um, in this event, it's probably a little bit easier because obviously if I do get beat, I've only got myself to blame sort of thing. And um, yeah, I'm not letting anyone else down. But yeah, it's definitely going to help put me in good stead and everything. But um, yeah, you just got to see how it goes on the day. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll let you go and prepare for your quarterfinal later on. OK, cheers, Tom. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, thank you, John. Good luck against uh, Jordan Church tonight. Meanwhile, a bit of an edgy opener between these two. A couple of errors. Have the trousers blinding both players early on. <laughs> yeah, I think a couple of comments from the crowd. You can see Martin lapping it up. He uh, he doesn't mind sticking himself out there to be shot at. A hell of a pair of trousers. I'm actually a bit of a fan. <laughs> Yeah, he said. He said when he uh, made his walk on. Thanks, thanks for that intro. I was like, well, you're wearing them, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody else. Don't have a go at the trousers. <laughs> it's quite a lengthy uh, opening frame by Shootout standards. He's got a lengthy list of sponsors on his back as well. To be fair to him, uh, Martin McIntosh. That can is I, a hell of a list. Can only be a good thing, though. Yeah. Exposure these players get from the shootout, obviously on live TV. It's a very popular guy, Martin. Scotland international as well. You know, he's no mug. He's been here from the start. He's uh, probably hasn't quite shown his full potential in these um, these uh, the, the, the the events that he has played in so far. But um, he's a prolific money match player and uh, seems to have a very good record. And they're often played in quite rowdy atmospheres, so. Should set him up quite well as he takes a 1-0 lead. Yes, McIntosh first on the board. Not caught live this one yet. See Neil um, being a local lad as well, and sort of fairly new to Paul from 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 obviously being, like I said, such an accomplished snooker player, but double club champion now, and uh, really is taken to his Paul. But it, it, this is so new for him. Oh, it's a good break from Neil. Great break. Three, four balls down. And the Reds, the Reds are looking fairly tasty. I want to be great. Just come on, Neil. Get you. I'm sorry to be biased here, but let's get a frame on the board, Neil. Come on. It's the third of our last 16 matches, so five to come. With Chipperfield against Clark next. What do we know about these two? Well, Sean Chipperfield is uh, as close to Jordan Church as you're going to get, really. Um, plays plays very quickly very very quickly but he is a, uh, a former world champion I think 2016 yep. he won the world championships and um, yeah a very very good player uh, you don't you don't fluke world championships he's um, he's in my bad books at the moment played him at the tour last weekend a couple of weekends ago I was 6-3 up and uh, managed to lose 7-6 oh, in the space of about 10 minutes wow yeah shut me out was that was that down to you or him uh, one mistake a couple of uh, dry breaks and before you know it, I've lost 7-6 cutthroat 
That's Paul in a nutshell. That's Paul in a nutshell, yeah. And Neil Winkworth there has just missed his second last ball. Oh, that's not going to do. That's not going to do his his nerves any good. Let's have another look at that. He can't be missing those. Across it slightly. I think he was maybe concentrating a little bit too much on getting the cannon right. Just taking his eye off the pot there. So a bit to, a bit left in this frame. Yeah, it's a good shot from uh, Winky, as we call him. The thing is, in this frame, I mean, Martin's got three safe balls. Um, although, you know, he's got his hand on the table, you, you, you've got to be quite happy. But it's normally when your opponent breaks down with just a couple of balls left, you're a big favourite in the frame, but he's not here. And... If this red goes past the black into the middle pocket, this is a this is a good chance for Neil. I think it does go. Tough though, isn't it? It's obviously tight. No. Very close, unlucky. But again, he's kind of, you know, he's left the red right over the middle pocket. And um, Martin McIntosh, you might see him screw up into this, into his problem area. He's gone into it now. It's a really good shot. Wow. It's a very good shot. Played might that very seem, nice. Yeah, might see him play a similar shot now, and just punch this this into the top right corner and screw up table to try and dislodge the one on the cush. If that goes well, open the frame right up for him. It's nicely done. Looking fresh and sharp, isn't he, today? The Scotsman. He's either winning best dressed or worst dressed, isn't he? He's, he's nowhere in between. Well, you're certainly not going to miss him. That's gone a little bit wrong here. It's, I think the shot probably should be to, to, to lay a snooker, but... Yeah, I think that's what he's playing. Yeah, it's, it's going to be quite an easy get-out. That's why you don't like laying these snookers, because, I mean, it's, it's a fairly simple one-cushion escape for Neil Winkworth. Well, if it goes right, then that could be for him to Winkworth. It could. If it goes very right, I mean. The only thing with these brand new cloths, they do slide a little bit more. Here we go. Is it it? He's made it. Well, there we go. Bit of work to do, but an opportunity that he wouldn't have expected. No, and he's going to need to dig, dig into this, cut this into the middle pocket and screw back up table. This is tough. To, needs to avoid the yellow he has and he's on it yeah slightly uh, closer to the cushion than he would have wanted but he'll take that all day given where he was 30 seconds ago yeah he needs this set on the nerves no mistake he's and he's on the board one laps in concentration from Martin McIntosh and a frame on the board for the local boy, Neil Winkworth. 1-1. One, one. So that's how we look. Jordan Church already a 5-1 win over George Tierney on Tierney's big comeback. That didn't go according to plan. John McAllister just winding down the clock to see off Zach Shepherd 4-3. Book his place in that All England quarter-final against Jordan later. And the winner of this against the winner of the next match. You talk, talk me through Sean Chipperfield. What do you know about Dan Clark? Northern Ireland international. Yeah, a qualifier, I believe, Dan Clark. And um, yeah, we were having a chat with him earlier. He's uh, he actually used to play. He's got over a hundred caps for Ireland. Um, Played at, hockey. At hockey. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, in Great Britain too. So I had a little Google of him. I found him as well.
just to make sure he wasn't making it up. Yeah, that was, funny enough, that was my first instinct when I read that. I thought, <laughs> surely I would have heard of that. <laughs> yeah, it was quite interesting. 49 years old, so obviously his hockey days have probably Long gone. been behind him for quite a while. But, yeah, it should be interesting to see. He's, he doesn't he doesn't talk himself too much up as a player, but he, he won, his, won his qualifier. So he's here by right. Probably the player we know the least about, to be honest. Neil Winkworth. I like this. He's played this dead weight. It's gonna, it's gonna give you natural position. No, he's missed it. He's missed it. But he's taken on the more difficult part, and it, it would have been worth it because if he'd have got the pot in angle, he would have come across the left-hand side of the table and been on his bad ball. But uh, similar to the last frame for for Martin, he's come to the table and his balls are a bit knackered, really. I think he's fully covered that pocket, so if Neil was to get down into this bottom right-hand side, bottom right-hand corner of the table, he probably could play the red off the yellow to open the pocket up, but a bit of a messy frame. Yeah, well, it's been a messy match. We're almost at the midpoint of the match, Dan. It's 1-1 with no end in sight in, in the third rack here. Neither player has, uh, has caught fire, I think it's fair to say. No, and it probably makes, I suppose, when you put it like that... that this frame's probably even more crucial because the rate they're going at, they might only fit one more in. Yeah, well, I'm sure they'll speed up. They'll have to anyway, 15-second shot clock imminent. That could cause havoc for these two. Yeah. A lot of missed pots in this match. Now, if the red goes into the top left-hand corner pocket, I don't know if we can see if it does. Neil's just checking now. So if it does, he hasn't got a full pocket. But if it does go, um, this is a chance for Neil Winkworth. Now the shot clock will reset to 15. Yeah, now it gets fun. Lovely queuing, that's great queuing. Hampered queuing. Oh, that's, a, that's a great shot from Neil Wentworth. He looks again, so he clearly hasn't got a full pocket. This is not an easy shot. I don't think that goes, does it? No. no it didn't look like it from that angle. I don't know why he played it. Well, I suppose it was almost as though I don't think it goes, but let's see if I'm right. Yeah. Trust yeah. your judgment. Maybe worst case scenario with those, if they don't go. Just try and play it into the far jaw and, and cover the pocket. But uh, he's played it too hard to be able to do that. Well, this is already looking like being the, the lowest scoring match of the season in the town shooter. It could well be, actually. What is the lowest scoring match? Do we know? Off the top of my head, have we had a have we had a 3-1, maybe, or a 3-2? We haven't had two runs, have we? No. Uh, this is actually, um, that first shot, this is actually a really good finish from Mike McIntosh if he gets these. He's opened the frame up now, but th these weren't easy when they came to the table. And he's played that one good shot, risky shot, ball down the cushion to, to break out his bad ball, and he's absolutely nailed it. And uh, it's opened the frame right up here. It's almost as though the, uh, the halving of the shot clock has helped him. And now he's just getting down to play. So he's taken these really well, the man from Aberdeen and McIntosh clearing up to nudge ahead at 2-1. Not a popular man in, these bu in this building. 2-1 <laughs> up against the local champ. Yeah, popular man on the circuit, but not, not today in this match. No, no, he's got the whole crowd against him. I see Winky there. Knows, knows just how much, how much importance is on this next frame. He really needs it. He broke really well in the last frame as well, so he'd love a break like he did last time. 
He got himself a good chance from the break last time. Oh, it's a big break, but the yeah. white straight in. That's an error as well. It didn't get kicked in. It just went straight in off into that middle pocket. That's bad queuing. Straight in that middle pocket, but a really good split. It's given Martin a good chance to go 3-1 up here. Yeah, and you think 3-1 will be uh, irretrievable. Disappointing this for the club here. Yeah, all the hopes could well turn to John Joe Sharkey. Yeah. Who is the other? He's only added this morning. Only added this morning. And um, very good player there, John Joe. Very good player, but uh, he's uh, he's going to find himself up against Jordan Shepherd, so it's hardly hardly uh, hardly a dream draw. Yeah, that's that's if you if, if you could select one draw to avoid. I think <laughs> that would probably be it. It would be. Now, Neil might just have a little bit of hope here because because Martin's left himself just slightly the wrong angle, so he's going to leave this black at distance and uh, queuing off the cushion as well. This is this is by no means uh, a gimme. Yeah, this is the last hope you would say in the match. Big moment. Played brilliantly. Played brilliantly. 3-1 Martin McIntosh and that's uh, he will feel so much better after that 3-1 up with just 10 minutes to go he'll probably feel the worst he can do is uh, is, is lose two frames in five minutes to be honest and in 10 minutes and Winky yeah. is right up against him with his, his break off as well yeah yeah and Winky needs his next break and he needs it quick as well Is he going to return the favour? He almost went in off himself there, Martin, but he's made a ball. He's made a couple of balls. Bit of a messy table. And he doesn't need to rush these because the scoreboard and match clock are both on his side. Although, having said that, since he has sped up, he started playing a lot better. He has, actually. I think it does help people sometimes. And it's like, like we've spoke about before. And it gives you less chance to sort of doubt yourself. you kind of just got to get on with it. Well, it's all, it's all then about natural talent and natural instinct rather yeah. than talking your th thinking yourself or talking yourself out of a shot. Yeah. He's in a bit of a pickle here as well because I don't really see how he's going to clear these. I think he may have even gone in off. He has. Now then, Winky. Here's your chance. Still really plenty of time in this match. I mean, if he clears these, it's going to be a couple of minutes tops. So, no need to perhaps rush as much as he thinks he needs to. He's played that nice, actually. Yeah, some players like to clear the balls in areas, so he might well come up table for the three. Have we written him off too soon? You're right, 3-2 with, it'll be what, seven minutes left? Bags of time. Yeah. I feel right. he's just sort of playing a little bit too quickly. I feel like he needs to realise that 15 seconds is longer than he realises, longer than he thinks. It's almost as if he's trying to, to play the shot within three seconds. Well, that's another two shots. Well, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what he was playing there, but it certainly wasn't that. No, he was trying to steal the pocket and he's just caught it far too thick. He was trying to go in, sort of wedge the red out of the way. Get him out of the way. Now, just needs to leave himself straight on this. 
straight or just off straight, as long as he's not going away from the from the back. With his cue ball afterwards. It's all about this shot. If he gets this right. Oh, I think he's nailed it. That is perfect. Absolute perfection. It's all back on. Yes, my apologies to the Winkworth family. He's still in it. One frame in it again, 3 2. Come on, hey, he says. He Let's have it. Go on, Winky. He's up for this. Well, this is a big break off, isn't it? That's an understatement. Six minutes left. 3-2. What can you do? He's got one. He's made a he's ball, he's two. made a couple. He's broke well in this match. He's just, uh, the second one, he just went in off. Well, you've got a chance here, Winky. Oh, he's just about made the yellow, <laughs> but is he snooping himself? Well, wow. he's got three seconds, he's got two seconds, needs to hit it, and he has. That could have come out a lot worse. That is not too bad a result there for Neil Winkworth. Pocket. There is a finish on here. Take the red into the right middle after this. Doesn't want to go too near the yellow. Oh, that's that's a bad error. That is a bad error from Martin Mac. It's such a big margin of error there. He wanted to take the one to the right of where he is now next, and then it would have opened the frame right up for him. But this is difficult now. He's trusting to luck a little bit. How is his luck? Oh. Well, it's still tough, even with that stroke of luck. Yeah, if, if he can miss the bottom, the the bottom yellow and the bottom corner pocket, it, it might be sort of a natural angle to come off too. Has he come around far enough? He has. Yes, he has. Now nice. then, this feels like match point. It does. No. Oh, and he's, he's keen straight across there. And the oh, hello. Going, no. Wow. Oh, the crowd are loving that. Well, what a moment in the match. What a turn of events. That's extraordinary. That is absolutely incredible. If that shot had gone well, he was 4 yeah. 2 up with the clock winding down. Winky doesn't mind. <laughs> Look at his face. He is loving that. From nowhere, he's right back in this match, and I think he had a couple of options there, Martin. He could have topped it through and tried to play the black into the same pocket, or like we saw, just punch it in and stun across. He's, he's gone to punch it in, he's barely hit the jaw. And now it's anyone's, and somehow yeah. Martin has to get that out of his mind. Yeah, and there's still enough time to finish this frame as well. So, or are we going to get our first black ball shootout in quite some time? It's been over. I didn't have a single one in the last event, did we? No. Nope. Well, he's potted a red and a yellow. So it's still open table. Well, I've been working on this since Milton Keynes, and I've not seen one. No. It, I think the first couple of shootouts, we had uh, we had two or three in one event. So, um, like buses, maybe. This is not an easy finish, and if he does miss, not going to be an easy finish for Neil either. 
the Blacks not in the kindest of positions. I think we could be looking at a shootout here. What drama. One ball away from from victory, really, 4-2. Yeah, there was no coming back from that. What a shot. There would have been no coming back from that, and that, that couldn't have landed much worse either. And it's just poking itself out, this yellow. This is a big moment. No, it's, it's just there. Yes. No, he's made it. He's made it now. If this, you can see there, it's a great camera angle. The yellow does just about dribble into this middle pocket. Well, this yeah. is a great response after what happened last frame, but... Yeah, what does he do? Does he try and screw across the table and leave himself down the cushion, or does he just leave himself a double? I personally would try and top it through and leave myself a double into the middle. Well, kind of no man's land. No. He's got no choice. He's got to double it in the corner. This is massive. And there'll be 60 seconds left after this. Miles off. Well, wow, that is that is a mile off. Well, there's a minute. There is still time. Has he got time? Can to you get down and do it, Winky? This is pure drama. That's a great shot. Needs that to stay out, really. It no, he's all right. He's all right. He's okay. I'm getting too excited. 45 seconds. I'm not. He biased. can't rush it and miss because he'll lose. I'm not biased. I promise. Come on, Winky. <laughs> <laughs> and he's running round, it is like big break. This is extraordinary in Newbury. Is the local boy going to bring the house down? Oh no, he's not got it in the middle. He's under it by a mile. Oh. No! No! No, Winky, no. A huge let off for Martin McIntosh. And a massive sigh of relief for Mad Mac and his fans. Neil Winkworth, oh, oh what wow. drama, what drama, oh, just caught that near jaw, oh dear Winky, I feel for him, you've got to feel for him, well done Martin McIntosh, books himself a place in the quarterfinals later on, well, season. it should have been Martin McIntosh's, then it should have been Neil Winkworth's, it definitely should have been Neil Winkworth's, and what a let off for McIntosh who goes through, he's won it 4-3, and we'll be back after this short break.